please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Lunch and I'm Nisha Podar. With me as always is Mangalam Malu. Mangalam, good afternoon. Markets really tempering down the gains that it had seen in the early part of the day. At the moment, Sensex are holding up, uh, Nifty holding comfortably above 10,000 levels. But what I am really pinpointing at is the mid-cap universe. From being an outperformer of the frontline indices, it has turned to be an underperformer in the last one hour of trading session. So so that's a space to watch out for for the day. In fact, losing in the last one hour of trade and quite um, uh, rapidly are uh, CG Power, Crom Crompton Greaves Power, Dr. Reddy's. In fact, DB's Labs also along with Dr. Reddy's has been tempering down. Union Bank, PNB from the banking space and Idea Cellular from the telecom space, even though there is good news coming in in terms of the value unlocking. What are you picking up, Mangla? Well, uh, uh, Nisha, you know, as, as far as the front line is concerned, we're uh, uh, holding steady as far as both the Nifty and the Sensex are concerned. We opened up with a gap up and the gap up is sustained. In fact, we're uh, hover, hovering around that 10,050 mark. We'll keep an eye out on that. The mid caps, they're off the high point of the day, still pretty much in line with the front line indices if uh, you account for the kind of outperformance that we saw in yesterday's trading session. But what is actually worrying is the advanced decline ratio. That should come up uh, both the green and the red charts lines for you you and there you will see that they've started to come narrower from the opening tick itself so there we have it keep an eye out on that data point but apart from that no real complaints from the frontline indices led from the front by the omcs all of them at the high point of the day the bharti stocks also contributing by their own uh, 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 on the back of their own news flow bharti hotel up four percent Tech stocks, that will be in focus. Remember, TCS reports their numbers tomorrow. The IT bellwether out there, it is outperforming at the high point of the day. The other tech stocks are buzzing too. So TCS numbers will perhaps put uh, uh, put some uh, uh, put some sort of a color on what the earnings street is expecting from this space. Talking about TCS, it's not just that. Even the Tata Group stocks, the consumption ones, uh, namely Global Chemical as well as Tata Coffee, all of them are buzzing around in trade today. What's losing as we speak actually is the housing finance companies. After a massive rally, they're seeing seeing some bit of profit taking so we have DHFL LIC housing finance South Indian Bank on the other hand is again hitting northward in trade and that on the back of a CNBC impact remember the management told CNBC TV 18 today that there is no more stress in the book and yesterday's higher provisioning was just a one-off what is actually interesting is the put call ratio more puts are being added the put call ratio has increased to 1.45 versus 1.4 and now the bulls are getting a little uh, more tempted to short in the money puts as well. So the 10,000 put, that has been seeing a lot of riding for a while now. So today it's added almost 15 lakh shares in open interest for a premium of 50 rupees, indicating that 9950 could be a support. But the 10,100 put, that is something that I'm most interested in. Uh, 7 lakh shares added already. Remember, that is an in the money put right now for a premium of 80 rupees. Perhaps they believe that even 10,020 would hold as we speak. So, as of uh, the FNO space is concerned, bulls are getting a little uh, uh, tempted to write more puts. All right, Manglam, and uh, earnings season has uh, really begun. Some of the big ones coming in tomorrow and day after. So that is something that the Indian markets are going to also digest. Let's take a look at the global market action for today. And most Asian markets, they hit record highs, taking cues coming in from the signs of confidence in the U.S. And also Japan's Nikkei reversed early losses to climb 0.28%. Kospi to surges on the back of rally in the tech stocks. And the positive mood also extended to China which notched moderate gains and Hong Kong's Hang Seng index however ended flattish in trade today in fact in the red let's take a look at Europe which has just opened uh, some time back and it's a mixed start as investors really continue to monitor the ongoing political uncertainty there and meanwhile the UK Prime Minister Theresa May is to face opposition Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn in Parliament for the first time this season that's an important data point on top of investors' minds. And uh, meanwhile, the Spanish government is meeting in the capital Madrid today to shore up its response to the Catalan independence movement. That's an ongoing tussle going on. And remember that Catalonia has held back on an outright declaration of independence and sought further talks with Spain. It's an opening there. And there you go, all that weighing heavy on the European market.
markets. But let's uh, get back home to some stock-specific and important developments. We'll do that, but in, in a moment, we'll also get some global market opinion from Neeraj Seth of BlackRock. In fact, he believes that the Fed's December rate hike is a done deal. There is no reason for the Fed to back out from normalization, so let's listen to that, and then we'll focus on global stocks, so, uh, domestic stocks, rather. I think the interest rate hike in December is almost a done deal. Mm. So if you look at the market pricing over the course of last month, we have gone from pricing roughly 30% probability mm. to 80. So it's pretty much done. And given the strong growth, given where the, the average hourly earnings are, to some extent, the initial signs of the impulse in terms of the inflation, there's no reason for Fed to back out from the normalization path. Fed is going to be gradual and mindful. Obviously, they just started, kicked off the balance sheet reduction. They're going to go with the interest rate hike, and they'll watch the data and more specifically the financial conditions. All right, so that is uh, one uh, opinion coming in on the global markets. In fact, let's uh, focus also on uh, the oil marketing companies. And remember, they are at their day's highs. In fact, we have one of those commentaries coming in from HPCL from the sidelines of Sarah Week India Energy Forum that we've been covering. And Anshu Sharma, my colleague, caught up with the CMD of HPCL there. Listen in to what he has to say on the growth of oil and gas sector going forward. Com uh, companies who are here for the Sarah Week and for the interaction, they had uh, they had been having some discussion with the uh, individual oil companies also. Mm -hmm. So they have shown a lot of interest in India. Actually, India story is changing slowly, definitely. Earlier, uh, the prominence which India is getting today was not there. Definitely, people have started believing in India story. Mm -hmm. So that augurs very well for the country in terms of investment, in terms of progress, in terms of. Uh, uh, getting the world majors interested in India, getting the new technologies. Mm -hmm. And there are discussions, and let's see how uh, what all fructifies in that. But definitely, like Saudi Aramco opened an office there for yesterday in India, and they also had discussion with various oil companies, and they showed a lot of interest in investing in India in, in across the uh, various fields, various sectors. What could the likely outcomes be? What could the discussion points be? Well, Ritu Parnabhuyan now joins us with more details. Ritu, what's on the agenda? Well, broadly, it can be divided into uh, two parts. Firstly, of course, uh, you know uh, how bo uh, growth can be boosted. So that is one uh, set of uh, you know issues which the uh, PMAC members will discuss today. And secondly, of course, uh, uh, on on how to increase avenues for employment uh, and and investment. Uh, we understand that there will be a presentation which will be made on the state of the economy. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, from what we have been told by sources uh, is that we do not. Uh, 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 we should not be expecting any immediate suggestion that uh, the uh, PM's Economic Council will be making to uh, uh, PMO. Uh, uh, any, uh, uh, but but what we understand is that uh, the PMEAC will also discuss uh, uh, a mechanism to have a greater interaction with stakeholders. Now, on 9th of October, it already had a stakeholder meeting in, in, even before the first meeting of the PMEAC, and this will continue. And, uh, uh, and we have been told that uh, this PMEAC will be taking a lot of feedback uh, from different stakeholders, from different uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, sections of the industry, as well as uh, uh, from, from different uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 groups uh, from, from, from uh, different parts of the country, and then formulate policy, uh, for policy uh, and which will be then recommended to the Prime Minister's office at around 2.30. We expect a press conference by the PMEAC members, where more details will be shared on on what what got discussed in today's meeting. With All right, uh, so more details uh, about an hour away. Thanks, Ritu, for getting us. Uh all the details and a heads up on what's really expected. Let's uh, shift focus to another counter which has been buzzing in trade today. In fact, Axis Bank is the one in focus after CLSA upgrades the stock to a buy from outperform and also raises the target to 620 rupees per share. Avishek Kothari, our in-house banking expert, joins us with more details on why this upgrade. Uh, Abhishek, what really changes for Axis? It's actually surprising to see such an upgrade coming just one week ahead of the results. So CLSA, as you mentioned, have upgraded Axis Bank to buy from outperformance rating. They've also increased the target price to 620 from 600 earlier that they had. They have mentioned that normalization of stress levels along with, you know, the base effect and retail portfolio will drive the earnings for the bank going ahead. They have mentioned that 
Axis Bank has actually underperformed other corporate bankers by 15 to 20 percent over the last one year and that is why the valuations are attractive currently and this stock can re-rate going ahead. They have trimmed their uh, earning estimate by 1 to 3 percent over the next one or two years but they expect ROE which was at 7 percent in FI 17 to reach to mid-teens about by FI 19 to 20. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. One of the top five, six gainers on the Nifty is Axis Bank. But giving it company out there are the telecom stocks. The mega telecom tower deal is in the final stages, set to create a large behemoth worth over $20 billion. Nisha Podar gets us the details. Nisha? Oh, that's right, Manglam. In fact, this particular transaction has been in the works really for uh, more than one and a half years now. And uh, Bharti Airtel uh, to really ramp up its um, competition skills against uh, the incoming Geo also uh, is looking at more cash. So here it goes, the monetization of Bharti Infratel, which is in the final stages. KKR-led consortium has been in talks with Bharti Airtel for this transaction for a long time. So now it's going to be a mega merger. Uh, a telecom company, Tower Telecom Company, worth over $20 billion dollars with Indus Tower and um, uh, both Bharti Infratel put together and in that KKR led consortium is likely to have a controlling position and Vodafone as well as um, Bharti Airtel would be the minority shareholders. Now remember that Indus Tower uh, has uh, is a consortium again of Vodafone idea as well as Bharti and their idea could be really making a huge amount of cash by exiting its minority position in uh, Indus Tower as well. So a lot of cash value unlocking for all the big telecom companies is what this particular deal presents and that's really ramping up the hopes for Bharti Airtel's future prospects as well. All right, Nisha, thanks a lot for that. In fact, uh, we'll keep an eye out on the markets right now. The Nifty is back below that 10,050 mark and primarily led lower by the metal stocks. Tata Steel, in fact, should come up for you. That one's at the low point of the day. And as our ticker team is alerting us, sale too is at the low point of the day. Yes, Bank from the private banking space too has moved to the low point of the day. But talking about uh, the banks, South Indian Bank, that one posted its second quarter earnings yesterday. The numbers declined in slippages, but that's a one-off. That's what the management told CNBC TV 18. They said that all the stress is off the books. VG Matthew, the MD and CEO of uh, uh, the bank, is confident that the worst is behind them, and that's why that stock is up 5%. This has a component of 252 crores, which is entirely one-off. And that has been uh, very clearly mentioned by the statutory auditors also in the in the filing of the reports. We had announced very clearly that we had a 1,200-odd crores of uh, uh, watch list last, uh, last September. And we progressively, you know, I mean, reduced that. So this was a large part of that transaction. So we had sold out this much. And all that is now finished uh, with uh, June 2017. There is no more watch list. There, are, there is no more stress in the large corporate book. It's all finished. We certainly don't have a pipeline of large corporate NPS at all. March quarter, we had 1,148 crores of slippage. In June, we had 684 crores of slippage. In September, we have 252 crores of slippage. Okay. And even this 252 should be on the higher side. It has to come down. That is what we are looking at. Just for example, compared to last year, it has come down by 39 basis points. Okay. So definitely we are looking at, uh, you know, another 25, 30 or even 40 basis points coming down going forward. Let's get you some power talk. Arundhati Bhattacharya's uh, four-year stint at SBI has really come to an end. And Lata Venkatesh of CNBC TV 18 caught up with her in a candid chat about her tenure at State Bank of India as well as her 30-year-long career in the banking sector. And Lata asked her about an issue which may challenge her successor, the MCLR as well as the external benchmarks. Here's an excerpt of that conversation. One thing about the external benchmark we must remember is this, that if you're using an external benchmark on the loan side, you will have to use it for the deposit side as well, okay? Yeah. So that is something you must remember. And also you must remember that unlike international banks, Indian banks, 97% of the resources are deposits, yes. okay? Plus, India doesn't have a social security system. Banks are de facto the social security net. There are thousands of people who retire 
who don't have the risk appetite of going into the market and they depend upon bank interest in order to live. Now, if you're going to attach the deposit to the external benchmark, then your bank interest is going to fall quite, quite steeply. Yes, it will. So is India ready for that? I think, you know, that is a question that we really and truly need to look at. Because but you cannot is, have... Ma'am, the regulator is telling you this. So I am you know, a person in the I public understand. space. I am now talking not from the bank, not from the regulator. I am talking as an individual. I am also amongst those retired people. Okay? I am also amongst those retired people and I can understand how those retired people are depending upon a bank interest. I may be very lucky and I may be able to still work. There will be a lot of people who will not be able to do that and they are dependent on bank interest. Mm -hmm. Bank interest, if you attach it to the external benchmarks, will be at least 200 basis points yes. below the external yes. benchmarks. So where do you see it then? It comes to around four and a half. Four and a half. Now, can you imagine a deposit rate at four and a half in a country that doesn't have a social security as yet? Where and how will it be, uh, be uh, workable? When I keep reading this and try to write yeah. edits on it, there are three things that keep coming. Uh, capitalization, mm -hmm. privatization, merger. Mm -hmm. Where would you put yours? No, I think capitalization comes ahead of everything, everything else. else. Yeah. So capitalization, I don't see any way of putting it anywhere behind. And I have been saying this for a very long time. In fact, even with Dr. Rajan, one of the biggest tussles that I used to have is, what I had said is that AQR is fine. It must go hand in hand with capitalization and resolution. Mm -hmm. You know, it cannot be a single standalone initiative. If, if it takes time for resolution and capitalization, let's get that on board and then let's get this going. It's not that we didn't want that, but I wanted that, you know, if it's a tripod, the all three legs should be firmly in place. Yeah. Uh, maybe there was, were other uh, perspectives or maybe there were some other requirements because of which one went first and then one has come and then the other one is being considered. But whatever it is, my own feeling is that this is the best way of addressing. If you put all three together, it works fantastically. Then the down cycle is shorter in, in term and you can get back quickly. All right, that was Arundhati Bhattacharya, but can't keep your eyes off the market right now. The mid-cap index in particular, in fact, all the three frontline indices, the Nifty, the Sensex, as well as the Nifty Bank, have come off the high point of the day. The mid-cap index sharply off the high point of the day, currently in the red. And as we speak, there is a sharp correction that we're seeing in a lot of these consumer names. Raymond should come up for you. Raymond's taken a sharp knock. We have uh, Jubilant Food as well as PVR, both of them at the low point of the day too. Not just the consumer space, we also have a couple of financials. Andhra Bank is at the low point of the day. We have Manapuram Finance taking a sharp knock and there we have but, Cummins uh, too. But Manglam, we cannot take our eyes off also the frontline indices. Right. Uh, besides the mid cap, the frontline indices also in tandem have been losing the gains. And in fact, if you take a look at the contribution chart, Reliance has also slipped uh, substantially, uh, taking away a large part of support. And of course, yes, Bank Tata Steel, Vedanta are some of the ones which have really uh, taken off support from Nifty 50 as well, which has lost a fair bit of points in the last few minutes of trade. So keep an eye out on the overall market slipping in trade right now. Midcap Radar is going to take the market action forward.